price per share of the S and P 500 when he was born, Kirk? Uh, let's see. Well, so the well the index price. Yeah, index price was twenty five point eighty six. All right. So so a share of the S and P 500 was twenty five eighty six on the day you were born. Okay. Yeah. What's it? What is today, Kirk? Forty three ninety one. Four four thousand three hundred and ninety one. So so in your lifetime, it's gone from I'm rounding it off twenty six to four thousand forty four hundred. Okay. Return, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, okay. Um, so, if you if you just own the S and P five hundred for your lifetime, and if you reinvested the dividends, okay, and closed your yeah. eyes, what's the return for his lifetime, Kurt? Yeah, it, it's reinvested it's or not sound, reinvested. It's reinvested for start. Over modulated. Uh, Ten point nine nine. And what was inflation for those times, by the way? Three point five. So, so Bob, in your lifetime. If you just bought the 500 biggest companies in America and closed your eyes, they earned virtually 11% a year, while inflation was 4% a year. How you doing? Yeah, that one's pretty good, good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Why do you think those companies became worth more? Um. Well, because people were buying more more uh, stock, I would assume. Uh, they were, but there was a reason for that. Let me be let me be simple. Okay, uh, uh, Bob, companies okay grow in value because their their earnings or their profits grow in value. You okay with that? Yeah. 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 So, so Kirk, what were the earnings for the S and P five hundred when Bob was born? Two point four two. All right. So two dollars and forty two cents was the earnings when you were born. What's the what are the earnings today? Two hundred point nine two. Two hundred point nine two. Bob, okay. The the reason that the five hundred biggest companies in America, and by the way, some get in, some go out, okay, have grown in value in your lifetime, is because they're making more money. Okay, and as long oh, yeah. and as long as we're a free country and have capitalism and allow people to make money and do profits, that'll continue. So you have to feel okay about that. that that's why markets go up over the long run. In the short run, they have hiccups. Okay, they have downturns, they have crashes, they whatever you want to call it. Okay, yeah, and, yeah. and they're just natural. But the the world ain't coming to an end. Uh, those 500 companies, they didn't change much in the last four, three or four months. They didn't stop making oil at Exxon. They didn't stop making toothpaste at uh, Colgate or whatever. They're still they're still operating, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there's there's a disconnect between the stock market, what's going on there, and the real companies. And so I just wanted you to be comfortable with the fact that it's probably going to be okay, you know, it, it, and it, we'll get through this tough time, and that's why I think you're a, a perfect call for this show here. we, we got to go pretty soon. Yeah. Kirk, any comments before we let Bob uh, sign off with a comment? Or well, no, I just, you know, wanted to say thank you for the call. I mean, I'm sure you're in, you know, a similar situation to a lot of folks listening. Yeah, and so, perfect. You know, yeah. we appreciate real live calls, and... Um, you know, we, we we think or we hope that you're you know in a good position here, but but please oh please confirm that with you know with yeah, your with and, your person. And we're doing this in a couple of weeks. Maybe you can call back and let us know how you you made out. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll get in touch with my advisor and I'll do a little homework and maybe I'll give you. I'm a sorry. What's that? Okay. Don't tell him about us. It'll make him or her nervous. But that's uh, right. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That sounds. By the way, better. so how about you give us some closing comments for our show here? You're we're welcome. Just out of time here. Um, well, I, you know, I, I feel uh, I feel much better now that I made the phone call. Uh, you know, you you show me that the stock market, you know, continually goes up, even though it goes down a little bit now and then. So, uh, you know, I, I I'm a little more at ease. Well, I think you are because you use a little bit versus down a lot when you first call. So I think we're yeah. making progress with this guy, Kirk. What yes. do you think? Yes. <laughs> Bob, th yeah. thank you so much for the call. There's a bunch of people listening here saying, son of a gun. So we very much appreciate you going through this. And, yeah, how about, we're on in a couple of weeks. How about you give us a call let us know how you made out. That I'd like to know that. Okay? Okay. Okay, I can do that. Hey, you have a great day. Thanks, All right? Bob. All right, you too. All right, bye-bye. All right. perfect was that? All right. Well, sounds... Just want to let you guys know, Dick from Plymouth called back. He went in the gym, and, they, and they, someone said, you wouldn't be Dick in Plymouth, would you? They heard him on the radio. <laughs> I, you do have listeners. <laughs> All right. Proof right there. Famous, <laughs> famous people in a 20-mile you know, radius. Yes. Uh, all right, well, it sounds like we got to sign off here. Uh, you've been listening to uh, McNamara on Money. Uh, my name is Kirk Reed, joined today by Mike McNamara. 
Uh, we've been talking about volatility, and okay. hopefully we've been speaking at a nice, comfortable level so that you don't feel so nervous about level volatility. Level-headedness. That's right, level-headedness. Yeah. And with a little humor. With a little humor. All right, so enjoy the weekend, uh, and be well. WATD FM Marshfield, WBMS Brockton. The South Shore's first choice for live team coverage of breaking news, emergency traffic, and severe weather. WATD. Streaming online at 959WATD.com. And with your smart speaker, just by saying play WATD. CBS News Special Report. It will be a big day for abortion rights activists out in droves coast to coast. In Washington, D.C., 17,000 are expected to take part in the Bands Off Our Bodies rally beginning at noon Eastern time. Demonstrators will march from the National Mall to the Supreme Court, which is now enclosed by a fence. Rallies have been taking place almost daily across the country. Cameron Dole organized a youth rally in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Disruption for change. Right, that doesn't that people who conflict that with violence, but that is not at all what that has to mean. It can just civil disobedience, and being a bother is the way to get yourself heard. Another recent rally in Iowa. Whether you are finding that you need reproductive health care or access, that there's a community here for you, and we have each other's back, and we'll take care of each other. Abby Michael with Planned Parenthood helped organize that one. CBS News Special Report. I'm Stacy Lynn. News, weather, traffic, 95.9 WATD, 95.9 WATD.com. 78 degrees around the South Shore, 1001. Good morning, I'm David Cedrone, WATD News. We have four town elections today. One's in Hingham, polls open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Cohasset's town election, polls open 8 a.m. to 6. Halifax is holding their town elections today as well. Polls open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's at the Halifax High School. And over in Pembroke, town elections to take place today. Polls open 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Well, lots of things get delivered by the Postal Service, and today that can include a hey, Sharon to your local food pantry. This is the largest single-day food drive um, for the I just wanted to let pantry, and we've had uh, to her know for the past couple they're working years on the computers in the building right so now. I, I don't sent. have access so Saturday, May 14th, uh, to the Dropbox no folder at this time, but we'll get her the show as soon as we can. We just residents to get a bag of non-perishable okay, food items, you. canned goods, tuna fish, peanut butter jelly, anything like that. Put it in your mailbox early in the morning, and your letter carrier will pick it up and bring it to the food pantry for our families who have been coming to the food pantry quite frequently lately. Well, that was Arlene Dabrowski of the Marshfield Food Pantry. She told the South Shore's Morning News, while our town is participating in the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive, residents should check with their local food pantries as well. And there are 37 articles on the warrant for the Kingston Town Meeting, which is uh, started this morning. Kim Emberg, chair of the Selectment, joined WATD to preview the meeting. It includes an eminent domain article for the Water Department for Wells. Other articles include using $536,000 in community preservation funds to rebuild the Gray's Beach Playground. It definitely will. There's been a lot of buzz on, on social media as well. So the playground at Gray's Beach was installed in, I believe it was 2004, and they they conduct audits. A uh, recent audit was performed indicating that the typical life of a playground is about, this type of playground is about 15 years. So they recommend the auditor recommended that a plan be put in place to replace the structures. So the recreation department, I anticipate, will be presenting to town meeting and requesting that. It's, it's just I think it's a big number for people, even though it's funded through CPC. And I think there's some questions on the design. So hopefully the recreation department can address those questions, and and we'll see we'll see how it goes. Another article on the warrants is uh, considering the ban of plastic bags in town. So the Recycling Committee is proposing this single-use ban on plastic bags, and the article received unanimous support leading up to town meeting from our Board of Health, the Agricultural Commission, and the Recreation Commission. So they went out and actually met with all of these different boards and committees to try to see where everybody stood and answer any questions. And so that, that piece was unanimous support, but there were mixed votes from Conservation, Waterfront, and the Board of Selectmen. So I think you can see there that there may be some questions still outstanding just based on looking at the sort of mixed votes of those groups. 
Uh, the Kingston Town Meeting, that started at 9 a.m. this morning at the Kingston Intermediate School. We're going to have a nice summer preview coming our way this weekend as high pressure moves off the East Coast. That's going to draw up the warmer air from the south along with higher levels of humidity. But for this morning, we are dealing with some locally dense fog. By midday, it'll be thinning out and we'll be seeing the sunshine developing, taking us into the afternoon and setting us up for a warm, muggy day. The high, 84 degrees, with the wind out of the southwest at 5 to 15 miles per hour. But if you're out on Cape Cod, it'll be much cooler. Temperatures only in the upper 60s there with that wind coming off the cold ocean waters. Then for tonight, the clouds return along with some locally dense fog reforming. Look for some scattered showers also, especially after midnight, as it will be unseasonably mild tonight. Lows dropping back to around 62. And then for tomorrow, morning clouds and fog, even an early leftover shower. But by midday, again, partial sunshine developing. The high again will be in the upper 70s, a little cooler at the coast. However, there will be a threat of an isolated shower developing during the afternoon, but certainly nothing to cancel any plans over. And by Monday, partial sunshine, and again, a threat of some Afternoon or evening showers, or perhaps a thunderstorm. Highs in the upper 70s. For WATD, I'm Precision Weather Forecasting Meteorologist Bill Guile. Right, it's beautiful, 78 degrees here in Marshfield at 10:05. I'm David Cedrone, WATD News. Now, talk real estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. Hi, I'm Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique real estate firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing consultants who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston.
mechanical, electrical, fire protection, plumbing services for new construction builds. So you're doing all that stuff in the seaport? Yeah, mostly the seaport, downtown Boston. Um, so anything you're the reason the I don't area. recognize anything when I go in there yeah. anymore. <laughs> exactly. He just was in Ohio. He was uh, yeah. in Burlington, Vermont. Oh, so he wow. jobs kind of Yeah, we all do a lot of traveling. A lot of work all over the country. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Burlington. Sharon, is that where Mackenzie went to school? St. Mike's? Yeah. So Ma- yeah. Uh, yep. Sharon's daughter, Mackenzie, went to St. Mike's up in Burlington, Vermont. Oh, yeah. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've never visited. Oh, you I could. heard it's beautiful. It's a great area. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. it is really nice up there. Um, Lots of fun, like, bars and I don't know. Shops. Sharon's been raving about the p- there's, like, a pizza joint. Oh, yeah. Um, Sharon, we need to see St. Mike's. I never go there. We've only gone once. Okay. Um, is that getting better? Okay. Um, but Sharon's been raving about this pizza joint that's up there. I have no idea what the name of it is. When she gets on, she can share it with everybody. But there's a pizza joint up in Burlington, Vermont, that I literally – that's the first place I have to go if I ever go. She's been raving about it for eight years. Oh, my goodness. Eight. Have you been? I have not. So there's, she, there's she's got to tell you, and there. if you're going up to Burlington, Vermont, you got to go get the pizza, it, it, and then you have yeah. to tell me if it's as amazing as she says it is. Yeah. It's they a do great, like great vacationing spot for foodies, anyone that's trying to yeah. go around different spots, find different restaurants. Okay. Um, okay. So... Thank you for introing yourself. With regard, so what we kind of wanted to chat about today, sorry, um, is what the home buying process and experience has been for you guys, right? Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of set it up, right? We we met, what was the, f- the first step? You know, we met on the phone. You set up a conference call with Sharon to kind of go over what the process is. She brought me into that conversation. Um, and then... That was when I was actually going away on vacation. So we set you up with Jasmine from Maritime Mortgage, right? Is Jasmine's listening too, isn't she? I think she is. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, Jasmine, you can actually, Jasmine, if you want to call into the radio studio, uh, 781-837-4900, we can get you in here. Or I can bring you on Facebook somehow. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> call, maybe call the studio. I think maybe Tim, that Tim, yeah, Tim can get you true. through. Um. But so setting you up with Jasmine and talk about that process a little bit and how that worked um, with her when you talked to her about getting pre-approved and um, how her team was able, how quick and easy was that? Because it was. Yeah, um, I can't even believe how fast I was able to get pre-approved. I feel like it took maybe eight hours maybe 12 hours so not as scary as what everybody thinks right they're like oh do i really have to go through the process of getting pre-approved how long is it going to take exactly and they gave me like a list of what we needed to give information wise and it really wasn't that hard to obtain really but i had pretty much all of the those things i said what it was in. on the list um i know it was like my license um my probably like, w-2s tax returns yeah w-2s two months of bank statements two months of bank statements which was just going online and printing something out so um, all pretty easily accessible yes right? definitely and it was nice that we were close to tax season too because all the documents were still <laughs> readily available exactly <laughs> yeah we just like got them yeah. from doing that so and then it was like I think the next morning, George had texted me and was like, all right, that's it. Like, you're pre-approved. Like, here's your... Did you fill out any like anything online, like a questionnaire or anything? Or was it literally just, hey, these are all the documents sending it? I think they do like a secure website that you send everything through. Yes, I forgot about that. Um, they had sent us a link and then it was a questionnaire just of like how much your mortgage, how much like... Uh, what you're currently spending potentially. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then just like some preference questions and... Then at the end, just like upload the documents to the PDFs and submitted it. Yeah, because I, I mean, you guys really, I mean, I, I was gone. I was gone, so I wasn't part of the process, <laughs> but um, came back and kind of like hit the ground running. It was literally, we talked on, I don't know, like a Tuesday, mm-hmm. yeah. Tuesday or a Wednesday. And you were leaving that following I, month or yep, weekend. I, or... I was leaving that following week and you guys were, got pre-approved that week, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And kind I of think it was so it w- I, we felt bad for you guys at the time, like the timing that you guys called us. Mary never I can't remember the last time Mary went on vacation. No, uh, never. Six years ago. <laughs> yeah. And then my daughter, Casey, is getting married. So she's getting married in Greece. And actually, yeah, we leave May 25th. But I was having like a big party at my house. 
that same weekend, right? Oh, yeah, I forgot that yeah. that all coincided. Yeah, so you time. were on vacation. I was having a little get-together that ended up being 75 people, a tent, tables, you know. 75 wow. people? Yeah, uh-huh. There was a lot of people there. You missed a really good party. I know, I was sad. I FaceTimed her from the airport. Oh, I know. I was I like, I'm not missing you guys. Well, Aww. Mary has been with me since she was 21, by the way. So oh, wow. That's 11 she, years. Yeah. yeah, so she's sort of like one of now. my daughters. So she grew up with my girls, you know, so... Um, so we had that. So I was not available. And then Evis, I know, was like a one arm paper hanger, be, uh, wallpaper hanger, because she was with all other buyers that you had, yep. too. And then trying to, like, work with you guys. And then I'm, like, paying attention. I was like, literally, if they screw up my cousin's child, I am not going to be happy. Like, just, like, sort of scrolling along. But, like, didn't want to be, like, micromanaging, even though, like, I was, like, following along. Um, and then there was something else that happened. Oh, then Mary came back, had COVID. I had to move my other daughter, Mackenzie, move apartments for her, which was hellish in yeah. Newport. So, yeah, so you guys sort of got, like, thrown in. And then, oh, yeah, then I hear, oh, they got accepted. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> got an accepted offer. Yeah. I'm like, really? Wow, that yeah. was Chat- good. And it wasn't even on Mother's Day, so we went and saw a house, um, a couple of houses. We saw three on Mother's Day. I do remember Mother's Day. Yeah, on Mother's Day. I told her I was willing to be with you on Mother's Day. Oh. Wow. Yes. Wow. I was like, well, my kids, like, <laughs> seriously, they're 26 and 27. They don't care about their mother. Well, I was like, I'm the only one who doesn't have kids, so it makes the most sense for me. Mm. But I prepped. So I... Ha- um, I had talked to you guys obviously before leaving the house and if you were comfortable with me it had been days since I was showing symptoms from COVID but right. anyways um and it was the first house it was the first house that I had seen with you which is kind oh, of interesting yeah, that's true that. we were with Evis the entire time four yeah how many houses did you <laughs> see with Evis now I'm just curious to see how many four three three or four three or four really two the Rockland condo are uh, the Rockland Randolph House and mm. then the condo in the West Bridgewater House. We didn't oh. see that with her. At what well, was she, that? Ash. Oh, that's true. Yeah. No, Ash. that was the that was the one that her and I happened to be around the right. corner, right. and we were like, "Oh, no worries, we're around the corner." That so. was so. Yeah. That was so funny. We I remember we were texting you guys, and we had mentioned like, you know, hey, I just got pre-approved. Like, I know this is not the right order to go in. We haven't even met you yet in person, but like, I think we want to put an offer on this house, and. We, me and Kyle were laughing to each other because you guys worked so fast with your text messages within, like, seconds of each like, other. what do you mean? You're at the house? <laughs> you were like, oh, we'll be there in five minutes. And, okay, we're, we're here. This is what we think. Like, do yeah, this, do you do have that. a second to talk? Let's chat about the house. <laughs> you were like, oh, my God, I guess we're in good hands here because this has been <laughs> – this is so funny how fast everything was working. Yeah, within a 24-hour period, we got pre-approved. They went and looked at the house. We looked at the house, and we put an offer on the house. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so I'll just – that's not how we normally do anything. <laughs> so one of the things I remember at, right before, obviously, the first step for us in the process is always, you know, like a nice little intro with you guys, and then we're getting you pre-approved. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to also state for the record that Mary was completely stressed out about you being out there looking at houses before she went through her, like, presentation. I know. I was She's like, I haven't sat with them. I haven't gone over everything with them. They don't know what the process is. Ba 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 ba. And I was like, I'm sure that everything will be okay, Mary. We'll, fi- we'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, Mary was like freaking out about that. Well, so think of uh, no. So I did get you guys set up on MLS. I was gonna say I don't even know that you got into MLS. Like I'm that's not sure. just did we? I've never been on that website. <laughs> yeah, you might not be. I, I c- <laughs> legitimately cannot remember if we even had an opportunity to put you in in MLS. That's what uh, I felt so bad too after because I was like, oh, I, we did this the completely wrong way and like. We just were so unorthodox with that, and I just was like, I'm getting them off of their, like, normal, you know, But it all, wor- it all worked out. So but here one- we are. Yeah, exactly. Here we are. <laughs> um, so one of the things is, so we're getting you set up with Jasmine to get you a pre-approval, um, and then usually I would be going through, and this is a crazy little home buying process, step-by-step thing that I have, <clears throat> probably there's like 14 steps <laughs> there's 14 steps and there's a whole there's a whole presentation that we typically do just to try and eliminate a lot of um unknowns or set expectations for what the process is going to look like which normally you guys are 1000 percent the exception to the rule because normally it doesn't look anything like this <laughs> usually in that home buyers meeting i'm talking about how you know sale to list price ratio so offer uh, properties are going six percent over list 90 percent of the time or what what waiving contingencies looks like if it's the right move for you if it's not the right move for you like um you might have to i always joke like 
for unmarried women. You got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. Sometimes you have to put in a lot of offers before you get the house. <laughs> you guys didn't do that. <laughs> no. You guys we, didn't do that. We did not. We got really lucky. Yeah. I don't even know how there's 14 steps. <laughs> you're, you're on like you're you're, you're why, on. why did we pick them again so this is what like this is what normally does not happen <laughs> you're on you're on like step 10 at yeah. this point nice. we're, we're really in the home stretch <laughs> so what did you think about like when you first decided to start and then your mom's like oh call you know call my cousin blah 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 like but you can oh okay Hi. perfect hey jazz Alicia's hiding. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I don't want to be creepy, but I am. <laughs> well, a lot of the times you don't get to meet anybody in person anymore. Or you don't, I mean, mm. until closing day, maybe. Oh, well. <laughs> Just going to an open house. <laughs> Jasmine, so, you know, I thought it was really interesting, too. I mean, we talk all the time about the misconceptions of especially I would say first time home buyers where they feel like they have to put 20% down and they think that the process is really, and Kyle is shaking his head right now. And, you know, we're going to have to have a little get together for all your friends and we'll put a class together for them. So Mary can finally do her presentation <laughs> yeah. and Jasmine can talk Such to all them. Nerd. But um, I thought it was very interesting to hear Alicia say how easy the process was. So how were they in the whole process back to you guys? <laughs> so motivated Ka yeah Thank you. Kyle, you had said, you know, it was great because it was like tax time like that. But had you bet guys, you know, either one of you can answer this. Have you been doing some research on like, what will I need? And you were shaking your head. You thought you needed 20% down. Yeah, we knew that there were different options available. And we knew some of the documents that we're going to need going ahead. Mm -hmm. um, knowing, knowing that we can do a 3.5%, 5%, we're just trying to look to see what made the most sense for us. But luckily, George and Jasmine kind of answered that question on their own. And they didn't really let us pick <laughs> it was more like no this will get you this will get your skin in the game and you can move forward you put yourself in a good situation monthly and on a first down payment mm -hmm. so where were you doing okay oh, go ahead jess Next step. See, that was in my process. That was in my process. I never went over this with me. <laughs> yeah, Mary skipped all of it. <laughs> but you know what, Jasmine? I'm 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 actually gonna ask them a question because we've been all sort of speculating what what are what's in the buyers' minds right now. So Kyle and Alicia, seeing the interest rates sort of going up, was that sort of an indicator to you that maybe you should move faster than waiting to see until they get in the eights and nines? It was definitely scary. I know everyone's trying to wait and hoping that the market will correct itself or you know maybe even collapse. But 
it's just a scary thought going forward, knowing that we live in Quincy and we're paying, you know, $30,000 in rent a year. Yeah. So we're just trying to get away from that and kind of knowing that this is a small window that we can take an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of strike on it if we have the ability to. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. That's definitely true. And not that this really played a part because I think that if we didn't get this condo and then we had to continue, we would figure it out in regards to like renting. But um, our lease ends july 6th so and we're closing june 29th exactly oh, so i mean the timing of everything couldn't be more perfect in regards to having like an extra week in the apartment able to just like slowly move mm -hmm. things out as needed so we were kind of chuckling to ourselves about the the timing of everything and how perfect mm -hmm. the stars aligned for this one That's there, perfect there's a little bit of that it was meant to be type absolutely um, type feeling right absolutely yeah um, and that's something, unicorn. <laughs> is that why you sent me two uni unicorns this morning? I didn't get it. <laughs> I was like, oh, what's the unicorns? Yeah, unicorns and rainbows. Good morning. <laughs> and everybody had told us too, like, oh, you guys are too late. Like, you should have started this process way sooner yeah. because the July 6th thing, if you wanted to really be out by then, you should have started much sooner. But. I'm just laughing at that. <laughs> <laughs> to say, well, you know what? I had the best team that was so unorganized that they <laughs> no, that it, that it just it. fell together. Absolutely <laughs> no. not. No. Um, so I'm sure, like your family, like so, how did your family and your friends react to that? That's actually sort of a good prompting question because were they like, hmm, did you did you take enough time to look at enough houses? Did you rush? Did you go too quickly? Right. Well, sometimes I have that th like passing thought. I'm like, oh, I hope that we didn't like rush anything. But I mean, I love the condo, but. None of like my friends or family have at least expressed any of that to me. Maybe behind my back they did, <laughs> but everybody has just been very happy for us, which is a good thing. So, no, well, I, I think so. You had started when you first came in. We're talking about how um, y your coworkers were tell like kind of prepping you for what the process was going to look like. As soon as you told them that you were going to be looking for a house, they were like, "All right, well, get ready. It's a wild ride, and it's going to take you a long time, and you're going to." miss out on a lot of houses and kind of trying to set that expectation for you yep. and you didn't have that experience kind of at all <laughs> no i know and uh so that first house in west bridgewater ash obviously we didn't get that and uh i felt like the heartbreak after mm -hmm. and i was expressing that at work with like some of my coworkers, and they had been telling me like yeah we've put offers on like eight houses so far and we still haven't gotten anything yeah and they were like comparing it to being in a relationship and going through like a breakup and how you fall in love and then your heart breaks and I'm like oh gosh like I gotta prepare myself for, mm. for this over the next few months and yeah. then we put our second offer in on this uh, Whitman condo and then I go into work the next day and I was like my offer is accepted. Yeah, just Alicia's like, like so jealous. Yeah, Alicia goes in with like two snaps in a circle, and I know that's old fashioned, but two snaps in a circle, like no one breaks my heart. <laughs> yeah, watch out, Kyle. Yeah, watch out, Kyle. I think he's in it for the long run. You just bought, like, you're buying a condo together. So. Fingers um, crossed. <laughs> fingers, yeah. So, well, but you know what's interesting too is because. You know, you know, and again, you're listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. This, I am Sharon McNamara, and I have Mary Baker with me, my team member, and we have some guests with us today. Um, actually, my cousin's daughter, Alicia, and her boyfriend, Kyle. Uh, they just went through the first time home buyer process with um, Mary and Evis and my team. Uh, so we're just talking about that. Um, if you have any questions, I think we have two lines at the studio, 781-837-4900. We also have Jasmine on the line with us, who is their loan officer. Uh, for Maritime Mortgage, so she's wonderful, and I told you you would be in good hands with her. Like, if I'm going to use someone myself, then you're pretty confident, and I think Jasmine always gets nervous when I refer her people, especially when I, she'll know the difference, like, I'm sending you my cousin's daughter, I'm sending you my nephew's, yeah. <laughs> Mark's nephew. Yeah. <laughs> Do I make you nervous, Jasmine? <laughs> <laughs> Everything is okay. <laughs> well, Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. It's like the 
perfect storm. <laughs> Never go on vacation. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it was interesting, too, because when we do go through, the, when Mary does really go through the process to get back onto the serious side a little bit, and she was talking about the, suite, the street in the, West, the house in West Bridgewater, Ash. Yeah. Mary hated that house. I know. <laughs> so I love that you just said, I know. <laughs> She literally hated that house. I was like, and I she was just know, like, I just guys. don't think it's the one that I don't think I, it has this. And I was in the basement and it had ba 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 ba. And she's going on and on and on. And I was like, well. Well, Jasmine kind of nailed it on the head. It's not for us. It's not selling a house. It's not, you know, mm-hmm. writing a loan. It's literally, number one, you're Sharon's cousin's daughter <laughs> and boyfriend. <laughs> one. And two, I want to be your friends at the end of the day. Literally what I said to you guys um, about moving in. So they're moving in 4th of July weekend. I go, Sam and I have a 4th of July party. So you can come over and have a beer afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But it's it's more of that relationship. So I'm very concerned with the house that you buy. Making Mm -hmm. sure that it's a good financial decision. Making sure that you actually love it. That it's not going to, you know, have a lot of unforeseen issues down the road right. um, mm-hmm. and really setting yourself up for success. That house was beautiful. Yeah. They had a lot going for it. It just also had some major red flags in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I was not shy about voicing that at all. <laughs> Which we needed to hear. Yeah. yeah so Cause the you... blinders can be turned on very easily. So did you appreciate that? Or were Absolutely. you thinking like she's a little, no, we needed oh, to hear it. Yeah. Coming I mean, on a little straw. We... <laughs> <Mary>. Relax. <laughs> I haven't even met you yet. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> and did you think that that would be like what the process is? Like when you thought, okay, I have to have a buyer's agent. I remember one thing, Alicia, that when I was talking to both of you, And I had said, you know, this is the process. This is what we do. Um, If you're going into any open houses, like say nothing, but like the process, like to have a buyer's agent representing you doesn't cost you anything. Were you surprised by that? Yeah, I guess I don't really know anything about this process going into it. And I still (laughs) should have had the presentation. (laughs) But I just thought after with like the whole closing costs and everything, that would be something included in the buyers. But that's the seller's problem. Yeah. So. <laughs> it, very, very much so. Um, and I think that's something, that's a really good question, Sharon, because, um, or qu- not question, but more observation. I don't think a lot of people understand how it works. Mm-hmm. And that's what part of me going through the presentation is, um, is educating buyers on exactly how it works so that you're not thinking like at the end of the day, oh, crap, how's Mary getting paid? Or... <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's know, what I felt so bad about because we're taking all of your time on like weekends and yeah. Mother's Day, and I'm like, oh my goodness, Kyle, like we are asking for too much right now. Like we need to Aww. take a step Aww. back. Well, but- see that that's why it's important too. I know we did it the exact opposite way, but that's why it's important to go through that because we never want you to feel that way. And that's why yeah. I, I said to you, if there's ever any question, like text me at 10 o'clock at night. If I can't answer, I won't answer. I'll mm-hmm. answer you the next day. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't want anybody ever laying in bed at night worried sick to their stomach about anything right Mm -hmm. this Mm -hmm. is what we love to do this is why we've been doing it full time as long as we have um and i think it's important i literally just did the same presentation for somebody wednesday or thursday um and in going through it i told her i was like we operate under complete and total transparency all the information that i have i'm going to give Mm -hmm. and i want this to be a relationship i don't want it to be like oh she's my agent at Mm -hmm. the end of it we're your friends Mm -hmm. yeah like absolutely you know we feel that anyway yeah um jasmine yeah (laughs) jasmine what are jasmine will come to the fourth of july party (laughs) everyone everyone's invited (laughs) not me i'll be in egger town i'll be in egger town you're always on the boat i'll be in egger town always on the boat on fourth of july (laughs) okay (laughs) you can come over take the ferry but um what was i going to say jasmine so what are the next steps in the process for them and for our facebook listeners i'm sorry if you can't hear jasmine because she called into the studio we're trying to figure out that part of things but um we can reiterate oh you can okay great so Perfect. So if anybody does have any questions, 781-837-4900. That was Tim, my main man producer over there at WATD. We are in our home studio here in Pembroke Center. Uh, if you're going over to Stop and Shop and you want to say hello, come on over. We're here. Come uh, on over. Yeah. No, the, so Jasmine. The, uh, Christina Aguilera song stuck in my head. What are the next steps in the process? Like, and Mary, why don't you 
join in with her? Like, what are the next dates that they have to be concerned about? And Jasmine, what are the next things that you're doing in the back end for their loan? I literally just got it eight minutes ago. I'm, I looked at my phone. Literally just got it. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm on the radio show. <laughs> sorry, I'll make sure you get it. I'll make sure you get it. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. We said that very sensually. Emmanuel. <laughs> Emmanuel. <laughs> it will be Emmanuel. Love. <laughs> yeah because right now Ali right Alicia, now Alicia's like I can't keep track I don't Jasmine, know you're Jasmine just so you know if you're watching on Facebook too like they're, they're not breathing right now so <laughs> they're like what so she will go through this a lot slower I promise um, but let me actually let me stop with one question too though what are your suggestions to people right now I know like when interest rates were so low it's like alright you might as well just keep, you know don't put any points in and just keep a low low rate so you borrow on the bank's money this is probably not going going to be their first like it will be their first home but it's not going to be their forever home so do you suggest just go in don't like save your cash keep yourself liquid and so long as you can make that payment because they'll probably be getting out of it at some point anyways and they can refi Mm-hmm. 
Do you want to add anything else? Jasmine, can you write that down for us? <laughs> yeah, where's where's your where's your PDF? So, do you have any questions about that? I guess is no, but in all honesty, like, do do you, yeah. Do you have questions for her? Or, well, that's actually a good point. I mean, do you feel? I mean, we obviously we put you in good hands. That must be comforting to know too that she's going to give you the best advice, exactly. right? Absolutely, um, very comforting. There's yes. a lot of trust mm -hmm. that happens in this process too, right? You trust that your agent has your best interest. There's obviously a, a familial connection here, so you that that instant trust is kind of built in yes. right mm -hmm. like that everybody's going to take care of you but if that wasn't there you have to trust that your agent is giving you the right advice that is not knowledgeable about the market and that your lender is doing the same i agree um, yeah that's why i call it a relationship it is it really mm -hmm. um i all i kept on thinking jasmine as you were going through everything i was like when is she going to mention the appraisal when is she going to mention the appraisal <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You only you only covered Monday. <laughs> the appraisal's Tuesday. I'm kidding. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I know that um, that was part of the process, and Mary was talking. I think was Ky was it just yeah. Kyle on the phone? Yeah. Um, and I can you know, well, Jasmine. You know the setup of our office, um, so I can hear when she's talking, and I know she hates when I do this. And then I'll like just pipe in, and she has her earbuds in, and she's like like what like what but i can't help myself so but she was talking about the appraisal process and how the negotiation went so how many offers mary were on this property and kyle and alicia did you t did you fully understand what mary's point was when she was bringing up this whole process yeah it was definitely something new to us but it was something that was again captured in the fast forwarded process <laughs> as, <laughs> as everything was so I say that they wrote a killer offer. So there were five offers on the property. Um, mm -hmm. And the team that we're working with, they did it, the, in my opinion, the right way. They opened it up for private showings all that week, yeah. did an open house. Um, actually, they didn't do any open houses that weekend because it was Mother's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. It was incredibly easy to show. They ultimately ended up um, getting five offers. And it was a very easy house to comp, right? Because there were many properties that have sold, actually three properties that have sold and or are under agreement in the development right now and one just happens to be with one of our agents right one, yeah one happens oh. to be with one of our agents that was where, where we got the condo docs oh. so the way that we set up the offer is we had a very good idea of where we wanted to be from a price point perspective um, based off of the comparisons we based off the fact that it was a newer condo chose to waive the home inspection mm -hmm. because we really walked through very thoroughly mm -hmm. um, and I know I know we don't like to do this, but mm -hmm. if there was ever going to be a house, this would have been mm -hmm. the perfect opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, and essentially, they told us that's what they were looking for. You know, yeah. that's the offer that's going to stand out to them. Right. And then the other key factor was considering um, any appraisal gap coverage. Um, so that was a long conversation. Initially, we went in with no appraisal language. Mm -hmm. We just went in with a very aggressive price point, waived the home inspection. Um, we were able to review the condo docs ahead of time, so we didn't have that mm -hmm. as a contingency, which was amazing. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, nice and, work, Mary. And <laughs> well amazing. done. Well, right. so the other yeah. thing, yeah. the other step that we were able to take because the comps had um, sold in there is we actually, I, I say we, no, I did it. Um, <laughs> I called the other agents that had sold in that building to or in the community to find out if they had any appraisal issues. So I called Teresa Roth, who's the mm -hmm. agent um, at our office, and I called the other two agents. One of them was a cash offer, and the other two didn't have issues with appraisal. So mm -hmm. that's what gave us the confidence to kind of go forward with this appraisal um, gap mm -hmm. coverage when we decided to do so. And what right. were you thinking through the – like when all this was going on, was your head like racing? Like, or were you just like, all right, she yeah. got this? 
Well, I was in the middle of work. Um, <laughs> no so better time to write an offer. No better time to write an offer. I was like terrible service in the hallway trying to make sure that there was no patients that needed to be seen <laughs> and trying to figure out if we are going to be underwater with this appraisal gap or if we should comp that or I don't really know the words for it. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I felt very comfortable with Mary when she was able to find the condo docs and being able to talk to the other lenders or um, mm-hmm. realtors with the with comps. The, yeah, with the ones under agreement. Yeah. yeah. So I think it was better. the perfect it was a perfect storm of um, being able to gather as much information ahead of time prior to writing the offer. Exactly, because um, mm-hmm. a lot of times that can't happen. Um, right. So that put you guys in the ballpark of being able to write such a good offer. Well, you were able to do the research before you did the offer, so it wasn't contingent upon anything. And that's why when I have listings, I don't. I want to have offers due on Tuesday so it gives buyers the opportunity to go to town hall and do their due diligence if they have to on Monday, right? You can't have an open house on Sunday. All the offers come in on Sunday. Well, then it's contingent upon this, that, and the other thing. Just just get your information. Tell me if you're staying in the game or not. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Kyle, what about you? What was your thought process? Uh, So, a lot of it was new to me as well, Um, just a foreign topic, but... It, for a first-time home buyer, it was very comforting to know with the appraisal gap. Mary was saying that it was coming up more 70% of houses right now that are going under contract mm-hmm. that you have to have some type of language in there. And again, first-time home buyer, you don't really know that process. So it's like, am I going to pay this out of pocket? Mm-hmm. And then getting to know the whole situation and how it can actually work, it was nice to know that there's different scenarios and different options that you can move with going forward. So mm-hmm. even you can put your offer in a real strong offer and then still kind of figure it out down the road where you're not just having to worry about cash in pocket or cash coming out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where Jasmine comes in. That's where Jasmine comes in. (laughs) Jasmine will work her magic on on the back end, Jasmine and George. Um, But that was one key factor that I found myself kind of repeating to you guys because when we were deciding on what that number amount was going to be for our appraisal gap coverage, I was like, it's not really $10,000 out of your pocket. It can be if you choose to, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be. Right. So it's not, I'm, I'm writing a check for that money. Um, there are options, and that's the key point, right, yeah. is that you're not tied to one or the other. And being able to qualify, correct, Jasmine? Of course, yeah. Absolutely. I think that's where um, a lot of people, and we've been talking about it for, it's more commonplace now, I think, than it was ever before um, to talk about appraisals. Literally, I had a property, so I was using this as an example for you guys, um, which, Jasmine, you'll have to explain this to me one day. Um, But we had a property that we listed in Weymouth, and now it's closed now, so I can talk about this publicly, but it was on market for four ninety nine. dollars um, the initial appraisal appraiser came through, and actually the buyers had waived their appraisal contingency entirely. Um, we were under contract for five eighty, so eighty thousand dollars over asking. Um, the initial appraisal appraiser came out and appraised it at four ninety, mm. so ninety thousand dollars difference, mm-hmm. and below our even list price, which is crazy to me. Um, we were able to get a reappraisal. They re uh, another appraiser came in, appraised it at five sixty, and ultimately went through underwriting and um, ended up appraising at five eighty. So they bumped it up to five eighty. So 
I don't understand how something like that works, Jess. You could tell well, me, uh, tell yeah, me well, about that. Is, I, I'll tell you how it happens. I mean, sometimes appraisers, they're so busy. They're so backed up. They're so, like, some of them are just having a bad day. Like, they're not really being that thorough. I mean, that was our listing, right? So yeah. I know that you went to the appraisal, yeah. right? Was that person sort of miserable? I'm just guessing. Yeah, so you know she hated dogs, so I don't trust anybody who hates oh. dogs. Just yeah, saying, you know I get a I get a bad bad <laughs> mojo. <laughs> yeah. But it, so yeah, we have I, to be careful. What if we get that person again? Yeah, I know. I won't say her name. Okay. Um, I remember it though. I'm never gonna forget. Mm. Um, but I think that's where. So when we talk about waiving appraisal language, that's like the nightmare, right? So mm-hmm. the nightmare is waiving it entirely and then having it appraise ninety thousand dollars below what you're yeah. what you're um, offering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in that, so that's the worst case scenario. When we're talking about you know appraisal gap coverage and making like small concessions, they're very doable. Like two mm-hmm. completely different things. So yeah. I would never be comfortable waiving an appraisal, mm-hmm. but giving to some type of gap, I think. In today's world, it's just coming up more and more frequently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Jasmine, you're seeing, I mean, all the offers that are going through, not just from Boston Connect, but, you know, all the other, you know, agents and companies that you work with. And Kyle had said that, mentioned 70% that Mary had said. I would guess that that number is higher, that people are putting appraisal. Some type of language. Appraisal language in the offer. What are you seeing, Jasmine? Mm-hmm. That's literally what Sharon, so when she was saying she was ye- not yelling at me, but yelling to me while I was on the phone with Kyle, mm-hmm. that's what she was saying. She was like, it's just, if they're happy paying for it, then it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if that's, if they're happy paying the price. And I'm like, I know, we've already talked about this. Yeah, because the sale price isn't changing. Right. Yeah. Right? right. It's just, you know, and again, though, being allocated it's, a, it's, a, it's a mindset too, though. I mean, there are a lot of people, let's face it, if I go to buy a pair of shoes and uh, you know what I mean and they're worth $50 I certainly don't want to pay 75 for them exactly. right mm-hmm. so it's like a mind thing yes mm-hmm. right so it's tell like, us well that was our offer for or that number was our offer but with that appraisal gap if it doesn't get appraised for what we were going to offer is that sca- that's definitely something scary like oh mm-hmm. did we just do you feel like you're overpaying? Mm-hmm. Overpay yeah. like by an enormous amount, like that Weymouth house spending like ninety thousand dollars over what it was yeah. appraised for. Like at that point, I feel like I would have heart palpitations. <laughs> yeah. yeah, being like, oh my goodness, I just spent almost a yeah. hundred thousand dollars. Thinking that you overpaid mm-hmm. and made mm-hmm. a bad investment, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, especially that's more it's about a bad investment. And bad yeah. investment. Mm-hmm. Never gonna get that back, and if you ever wanted to resell it, yeah, yeah. And too, I just I don't know. Um, Jasmine, what your thoughts are, but I don't think that we're in a bubble. I don't think anything's crashing, but I do certainly feel us flattening out a bit here. So I feel like we're not going to continuously see, you know, these higher prices over asking the way that we did. I think inventory is going to get even scarcer come fall just because, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, when I refinanced my house several years ago, I think my interest rate is like 2.375 or something, right? I mean, really, really low. Never leave. I, yeah, well, like, why would I, mm-hmm. right? Like, why would I sell my house mm-hmm. to buy another house that may not even be the same 
condition or value or whatever just to get you know a higher one so i feel like our inventory will be lower um but i think it's good that you guys like jumped in when you did jasmine you have something to say about that <laughs> oh, she gets so excited by the way you have to meet her in person because when we have her on the radio like she's just like just very so very, passionate, very, very passionate. <laughs> but go ahead get that passion out girl <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, who needs food uh, but jasmine we actually just have two minutes left here so we're going to be wrapping up can you give everybody your contact information so if they want to uh, talk to you about getting a loan how can they reach you <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And if you didn't get any of that information, you can always feel free to give us a call at the office. Our number is easy to remember, 781-826-8000. Kyle, Alicia, final thoughts for our final seconds? What'd you think? I'm just really happy that we <laughs> found this place and have worked with you guys. So this has been an amazing process. And so I just want to say thank you. Aww, and this so is the best cute. team ever. So best cute, Kyle. Ever. Copy and paste. <laughs> Copy and paste. We like that. Uh, and also, I am. we are putting a new listing on the market this week at 700 Center Street in Pembroke. It is a four-bedroom colonial. So if you want information on that, you can give us a call, 781-294-294. 4848 is my cell phone number. And also, I just want to put out to my WATD listeners, please send prayers to my family. My dad had a terrible fall on Thursday, He's still in the hospital, and um, we just really need him to recover and get better. Uh, so please send prayers his way. So thank you, everybody. Bye, Tim. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Because you need a hug. How do you, what is... So, you, well, so you know my dad, he's handicapped, right? Have you, you, you never met him? Like, okay. So he was born with his arm, no shoulder. So when he was born in Nana's, um, his shoulders were too big, so they, like, crushed him inside of her because uh, they thought one of them was going to die at that point, and it was too late for C-section and all mm -hmm. that. So he doesn't have, like, really a shoulder yet, so his arm is like this.